Israeli Declaration of Independence The Israeli Declaration of Independence, formerly the Declaration of the Establishment of the State of Israel, was proclaimed on May 14, 1948, 5 ER 5708 by David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine, and soon to be first Prime Minister of Israel. It declared the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel, to be known as the State of Israel, which would come into effect on termination of the British Mandate at midnight that day. The event is celebrated annually in Israel with a national holiday Independence Day on 5 ER of every year according to the Hebrew calendar. The possibility of a Jewish homeland in Palestine had been a goal of Zionist organizations since the late 19th century. The British Foreign Secretary stated in the Balfour Declaration of 1917. His Majesty's government view would favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. After World War I, the United Kingdom was given a mandate for Palestine, which it had conquered from the Ottomans during the war. In 1937, the Peel Commission suggested partitioning Mandate Palestine into an Arab state and a Jewish state, though the proposal was rejected as unworkable by the government and was at least partially to blame for the renewal of the 1936 39 Arab Revolt. In the face of increasing violence after World War II, the British handed the issue over to the recently established United Nations. The result was Resolution 181 2 a plan to partition Palestine into independent Arab and Jewish states and the special international regime for the city of Jerusalem. The Jewish state was to receive around 56% of the land area of Mandate Palestine, encompassing 82% of the Jewish population, though it would be separated from Jerusalem. The plan was accepted by most of the Jewish population, but rejected by much of the Arab populace. On November 29, 1947, the resolution to recommend to the United Kingdom as the mandatory power for Palestine, and to all other members of the United Nations the adoption and implementation, with regard to the future government of Palestine, of the plan of partition with economic union was put to a vote in the United Nations General Assembly. The result was 33 to 13 in favor of the resolution, with 10 abstentions. Resolution 181-2, Part 1, Future Constitution and Government of Palestine, A. Termination of Mandate, Partition and Independence, Clause 3 inches provides, independent Arab and Jewish states and the special international regime for the city of Jerusalem, shall come into existence in Palestine two months after the evacuation of the armed forces of the mandatory power has been completed but in any case not later than October 1, 1948. The Arab countries, all of which had opposed the plan, proposed to query the International Court of Justice on the competence of the General Assembly to partition a country, but the resolution was rejected. The first draft of the declaration was made by Zvi Berenson, the Histadra Trade Union's legal advisor and later a justice of the Supreme Court, at the request of Bin Rosen. A revised second draft was made by three lawyers, A. Baham, A. Hintzheimer and C. E. Baker, and was framed by a committee including David Reims, Bin Rosen, Haim Moshe Shapira, Moshe Charette, and Aharon Zizling. A second committee meeting, which included David Ben Gurion, Yehuda Lieb Maimon, Shred and Zizling produced the final text. On May 12, 1948, the Minhut Ha'am People's Administration, was convened to vote on declaring independence. Three of the 13 members were missing, with Yehuda Lieb Maimon and Yitzhak Grunbaum being blocked in besieged Jerusalem, while Yitzhak Mayor Levin was in the United States. The meeting started at 1.45 in the afternoon and ended after midnight. The decision was between accepting the American proposal for a truce, or declaring independence. The latter option was put to a vote, with six of the ten members present supporting it. Chaim Weizmann, the chairman of the World Zionist Organization, and soon to be first president of Israel, endorsed the decision, after reportedly asking what hey were they waiting for, the idiots? The draft text was submitted for approval to a meeting of Moetzet Ha'am, lit. People's Council at the JNF building in Tel Aviv on 14th of May. The meeting started at 13.50 and ended at 1500 hours, an hour before the declaration was due to be made, and despite ongoing disagreements, with a unanimous vote in favor of the final text. During the process, there were two major debates, centering on the issues of borders and religion. 
the borders were not specified in the declaration. However, its 14th paragraph included a commitment to implement the UN partition plan The State of Israel is prepared to cooperate with the agencies and representatives of the United Nations in implementing the resolution of the General Assembly of the 29th of November, 1947. The original draft had declared that the borders would be that decided by the UN partition plan. While this was supported by Rosen and Bikor Shalom Shitrit, it was opposed by Ben-Gurion and Zizling, with Ben-Gurion stating, We accepted the UN resolution, but the Arabs did not doubt they are preparing to make war on us. If we defeat them and capture Western Galilee or territory on both sides of the road to Jerusalem, these areas will become part of the state. Why should we obligate ourselves to accept boundaries that in any case the Arabs don't accept? The inclusion of designation of borders in the text was dropped after the Provisional Government of Israel, the Minhlet Ha'am, voted 5-4 to four against it. The revisionists, committed to a Jewish state on both sides of the Jordan River, that is, including Transjordan, wanted the phrase within its historic borders included but were unsuccessful. The second major issue was over the inclusion of God in the last section of the document with a draft using the phrase and placing our trust in the Almighty. The two rabbis, Shapir and Yehuda Lead Maimon, argued for its inclusion, saying that it could not be omitted, with Shapir supporting the wording God of Israel or the Almighty and Redeemer of Israel. It was strongly opposed by Zizling, a member of the secularist Mabim. In the end the phrase Rock of Israel was used, which could be interpreted as either referring to God, or the land of Eretz Israel, Ben Gurion saying each of us, in his own way believes in the rock of Israel as he conceives it. I should like to make one request, don't let me put this phrase to a vote. Although its use was still opposed by Zizling, the phrase was accepted without a vote. The writers also had to decide on the name for the new state. Eretz Israel, Ever, from the name Eber, Judea, and Zion were all suggested, as were Ziana, Ivria, and Herzliya. Judea and Zion were rejected because, according to the partition plan, Jerusalem, Zion, and most of the Judean mountains would be outside the new state. Ben Gurion put forward Israel and it passed by a vote of 6 to 3. Official documents released in April 2013 by the State Archive of Israel show that days before the establishment of the State of Israel in May 1948, officials were still debating about what the new country would be Chaldean Arabic, Palestine, Philistine, Zion, Sayon, or Israel, Israel. Two assumptions were made that an Arab state was about to be established alongside the Jewish one in keeping with the UN's partition resolution the year before, and that the Jewish state would include a large Arab minority whose feelings needed to be taken into account. In the end, the officials rejected the name Palestine because they thought that would be the name of the new Arab state and could cause confusion so they opted for the most straightforward option, Israel. At the meeting on 14th of May, several other members of Moetzat Ha'am suggested additions to the document. Mayor Vilner wanted it to denounce the British mandate and military but Charette said it was out of place. Mayor Argoff pushed to mention the displaced persons camps in Europe and to guarantee freedom of language. Ben Gurion agreed with the latter but noted that Hebrew should be the main language of the state. The debate over wording did not end completely even after the declaration had been made. Declaration signer Mayor David Lowenstein later claimed, it ignored our sole right to Eretz Israel, which is based on the covenant of the Lord with Abraham, our father and repeated promises in the Tanakh. It ignored the Aliyah of the Ramban and the students of the Vilna Gaon in the Baal Shem Tov, and the rights of Jews who lived in the old Yeshu. The ceremony was held in the Tel Aviv Museum, today known as Independence Hall, but was not widely publicized as it was feared that the British authorities might attempt to prevent it or that the Arab armies might invade earlier than expected. An invitation was sent out by messenger on the morning of 14 May telling recipients to arrive at 1530 and to keep the event a secret. The event started at 1600 hours, a time chosen so as not to breach the Sabbath, and was broadcast live as the first transmission of the new radio station Kol Yisrael. The final draft of the declaration was typed at the Jewish National Fund building following its approval earlier in the day. F. Scherf, who stayed at the building in order to deliver the text, had forgotten to arrange transport for himself. Ultimately, he had to flag down a passing car and ask the driver, who was driving a borrowed car without a license, to take him to the ceremony. Scherf's request was initially refused but he managed to persuade the driver to take him. The car was stopped by a policeman for speeding while driving across the city though a ticket was not issued after it was explained that he was delaying the Declaration of Independence. Scherf arrived at the museum at 1559.
Ben. At 1600 hours, Ben Gurion opened the ceremony by banging his gavel on the table, prompting a spontaneous rendition of Hatikva, soon to be Israel's national anthem, from the 250 guests. On the wall behind the podium hung a picture of Theodor Herzl, the founder of modern Zionism, and two flags, later to become the official flag of Israel. After telling the audience I shall now read to you the scroll of the establishment of the state, which has passed its first reading by the National Council, Ben-Gurion proceeded to read out the declaration, taking 16 minutes, ending with the words Let us accept the foundation scroll of the Jewish state by rising and calling on Rabbi Fishman to recite the Shehekianu blessing. As leader of the Yeshuv, David Ben-Gurion was the first person to sign. The declaration was due to be signed by all 37 members of Moetzet Ha'im. However, 12 members could not attend, 11 of them trapped in besieged Jerusalem and one abroad. The remaining 25 signatories present were called up in alphabetical order to sign, leaving spaces for those absent. Although a space was left for him between the signatures of Eliyahu Dobkin and Mayor Vilner, Zerch War Haftig signed at the top of the next column, leading to speculation that Vilner's name had been left alone to isolate him, or to stress that even a communist agreed with the declaration. However, War Haftig later denied this stating that a space had been left for him, as he was one of the signatories trapped in Jerusalem where a Hebraicized form of his name would have fitted alphabetically, but he insisted on signing under his actual name so as to honor his father's memory and so moved down two spaces. He and Vilner would be the last surviving signatories, and remained close for the rest of their lives. Out of the signatories, two were women, Golda Meir, Meyerson slash Meyerson, and Rachel Cohen Kagan. When Herzl Rosenblum, a journalist, was called up to sign, Ben Gurion instructed him to sign under the name Herzl Vardy, his pen name, as he wanted more Hebrew names on the document. Although Rosenblum acquiesced to Ben Gurion's request and legally changed his name to Vardy, he later admitted to regretting not signing as Rosenblum. Several other signatories later Hebraised their names, including Mayor Argoff, Grabowski, Peretz Bernstein, then Fritz Bernstein, Avraham Grano, Granovsky, Avraham Nissan. Katz Nelson, Moshe Cole, Kolodny, Yehuda Lieb Maimon, Fishman, Goldemir, Meyerson slash Meyerson, Pinhas Rosen, Felix Rosen Bleewith, and Moshe Charette, Shertak. Other signatories added their own touches, including Sadia Kobashi who added the phrase Halevi, referring to the tribe of Levi. After Charette, the last of the signatories, had put his name to paper, the audience again stood and the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra played Hatikva. Ben-Gurion concluded the event with the words the State of Israel is established. This meeting is adjourned. The declaration was signed in a context of civil war between the Arab and Jewish populations of the mandate that had started the day after the partition vote eat the UN six months earlier. Neighboring Arab states and the Arab League were opposed to the vote and had declared they would intervene to prevent its implementation. In the on May 15, 1948 to the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Secretary General of the League of Arab States claimed that the Arab states find themselves compelled to intervene in order to restore law and order and to check further bloodshed. Over the next few days after the declaration, armies of Egypt, Transjordan, Iraq, and Syria engaged Israeli troops inside the area of what had just ceased to be mandatory Palestine, thereby starting the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. A truce began on 11th of June. But fighting resumed on 8th of July and stopped again on 18th of July, before restarting in mid-October and finally ending on July 24, 1949 with the signing of the Armistice Agreement with Syria. By then Israel had retained its independence and increased its land area by almost 50% compared to the 1947 UN Partition Plan. Following the declaration, Moetzid Ha'am became the Provisional State Council which acted as the legislative body for the new state until the first elections in January 1949. Many of the signatories would play a prominent role in Israeli politics following independence, Moshe Sharet and Golda Meir both served as prime minister, Yitzhak ben Zvi became the country's second president in 1952, and several others served as ministers. David Reims was the first signatory to pass away, dying in May 1951, while Mayor Vilner, the youngest signatory at just 29, was the longest living, serving in the Knesset until 1990 and dying in June 2003. Eliyahu Berligny, the oldest signatory at 82, died in 1959. Eleven minutes after midnight, the United States de facto recognized the State of Israel. This was followed by Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi's Iran, 
which had voted against the UN partition plan, Guatemala, Iceland, Nicaragua L, Romania, and Uruguay. The Soviet Union was the first nation to fully recognize Israel de jure on May 17, 1948, followed by Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Ireland, and South Africa. The United States extended official recognition after the first Israeli election, as Truman had promised on January 31, 1949. By virtue of General Assembly Resolution 273, 3, Israel was admitted to membership in the United Nations on May 11, 1949. In the three years following the 1948 Palestine War, about 700,000 Jews immigrated to Israel residing mainly along the borders and in former Arab lands. Around 136,000 were some of the 250,000 displaced Jews of World War II. And from the 1948 Arab-Israeli War until the early 1970s, 800,000 to 1 million Jews left, fled, or were expelled from their homes in Arab countries, 260,000 of them reached Israel between 1948 and 1951, and 600,000 by 1972. At the same time, a large number of Arabs left, fled or were expelled from, what became Israel. In the report of the Technical Committee on Refugees, submitted to the United Nations Conciliation Commission for Palestine in Lausanne on September 7, 1949, a 1367-rev.1, in paragraph 15, the estimate of the statistical expert, which the committee believed to be as accurate as circumstances permitted, indicated that the refugees from Israel-controlled territory amounted to approximately 711,000. Paragraph 13 of the Declaration provides that the State of Israel would be based on freedom, justice and peace as envisaged by the prophets of Israel, it will enter complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants irrespective of religion, race or sex. However, the Knesset maintains that the Declaration is neither a law nor an ordinary legal document. The Supreme Court has ruled that the guarantees were merely guiding principles, and that the Declaration is not a constitutional law making a practical ruling on the upholding or nullification of various ordinances and statutes. In 1994 the Knesset amended two basic laws, and freedom of occupation, introducing, among other changes, a statement saying the fundamental human rights in Israel will be honored, in the spirit of the principles included in the Declaration of the Establishment of the State of Israel. Although Ben-Gurion had told the audience that he was reading from the Scroll of Independence, he was actually reading from handwritten notes because on the bottom part of the scroll had been finished by artist and calligrapher Ot Wallish by the time of the declaration, he did not complete the entire document until June. The scroll, which is bound together in three parts, is generally kept in the country's national archives. Translation of the Declaration by the Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.